What's up guys and welcome to Escape from Tarkov. This time I will go over the basics and like uh, kind of a tutorial to show you the loadout. Not just for beginners but any kind of loadout what you need, uh, what you don't need and stuff like that. And just let's move on from there. So the first thing, uh, weapons. You need to think uh, what weapons you have. For example if you're gonna take pistol then you definitely don't want to take uh, body armor and a helmet because it's gonna be pretty much useless. You can't really kill anyone with a pistol. I mean another armored target so you have to go with uh, like this kind of gear. So if you're gonna take the helmet and the body armor, I think it's in here, there we go, then you also need a good gun. For example um, this AK with a suppressor can also mod it out a little bit. For example the sight is very important. Also one of the tricks in the modding is to take off this uh, sight in here this rear sight if you don't have a scope on it or uh, a hollow sight or something like this this rear sight it only gets in the way I will actually show you so here's a comparison for you just for the sight see this is with a rear sight see how limited it is it's kind of in the way and this one is the same gun without the rear sight see it's more open which uh, makes it easier to make headshots for example if I aim at this uh, headlight you can see the full scope where this uh, middle thing is but on this one see the rear sight is in the way in this game the weapon always aims straight so there's absolutely no point of having this uh, rear sight it just gets in the way so always take it off just sell it and make some extra money so next let's move on to the loadout what you need and what you don't need uh, first of all check what uh, magazines your gun takes and what ammo you have Ammo is also very important, so you have uh, different types of ammo in here. You need to also learn all the, you know, ammo types. For example, the BS is like high ve velocity ammo, but it doesn't really do much uh, anything else. I believe uh, the PB is for the bulletproof uh, armor piercing. Some of them say, like say this one, armor piercing bullet. This is really good ammo. Like one headshot can kill even if the other one has a helmet on. So it's really good for that. Uh, then the HP is for hollow point. Uh, if you don't know what it is, um, hollow point is, well, that's what it means. It's hollow point and it kind of like uh, explodes on, uh, not, not like explodes, explodes, but uh, it does a lot of uh, damage to unarmored targets. That's why it says it for hunting. So one bullet can like uh, rip uh, like half the limb off or something like this. Uh, so for example if you're using the hollow point bullets and you see that the other target is armored he has body armor and helmet then the best thing to do is aim for the feet or arms where you don't have armor the hollow point it will mess them up so there are different tactics uh, brs i'm not even entirely sure i think it's the yeah that's the reduced ricochet bullet uh, that's that's just normal bullet that's pretty much uh, like the bs really so in other words, know your ammo and know what you're putting in the magazine and also in which order. You can also get really creative and for example, uh, how did you sp how did we split the bullets? There we go, see that's how you split it. Uh, you hold down the control and then uh, left click and drag and then you can uh, select the amount. For example, you can get really creative and put like one bullet of this, uh, then um, one bullet of this like so then one of this and then again one of this and that you get the point so if you're gonna unload on someone and he has armor and no armor then you kind of do both damage at the same time so it's really good to you know get creative like this so next have at least one extra mag and again check what ammo you have in it uh, what's uh, ammo types and stuff and finally in the container what you should have well, you don't have to put it in the beta container, but uh, this med kit, it's really good. You should put it in the pockets and put it on the hot bar, the, this thing in here. So if you press number four, then it starts healing. This med kit, it's, uh, it's the best med kit, I believe, at this point. It uh, stops your bleeding, see, uh, removes blood loss, removes radiation exposure. I don't think there is radiation at this point, but anyway. Uh, it restores your um, health and everything. Basically, it's like all in one med kit. It's really good. But uh, if you're going to the health and you start bleeding from like uh, leg and arm, then you have to apply it twice to remove the bleeding. Or you can just open the inventory and track this onto any part you specifically want to heal. 
but if it's on the hot bar I think it heals the most damage part first so if you're like uh, getting blood loss or something then you don't have to stop and open the inventory you can just uh, click number four and start healing right away usually one med kit is enough but you might take another one for example this med kit it does the same thing than this one but it's a um, smaller capacity and it's also bigger as you can see uh, bandages you don't really need uh, splints you don't really need either because splint only helps if you actually you know um, break your leg from a fall or something like this so it doesn't help in uh, firefights so I would not recommend taking it uh, painkillers very important to have you might need two depending on the map size for example, if you're going to the shoreline or woods, these are really big maps, then I will definitely recommend taking uh, at least two painkillers. One of them uh, lasts for about uh, four minutes, I think, three, three to five minutes, something like this, real life minutes. So depending on the map size, you might want to take one or you might want to take two. So what else do we need in this container? You could take like another extra med kit, just in case not necessary morphine also does the same thing it also helps against uh, broken legs and stuff and i think it also um also lasts longer i haven't tested it see i don't know every detail but i know enough to survive <laughs> so uh very important thing uh, make sure you take extra ammo at least 60 bullets some of them stack to 90 i believe not this one but you need to take extra bullets one extra mag and extra bullets i will show you in the combat how this this stuff works and now let's move to the tactical rig and pockets for example if you don't have the tactical rig and you press reload then uh, there is no place for the magazine the two places it doesn't go in here then it will drop the magazine in fact you can't even reload because this is in the backpack if you press r it doesn't take the magazine from the backpack if you press r it only takes the magazine either from the pockets or from the tactical rig so that's why you need it it's very important to know for example the small max you can put in here and if you press reload it will reload from the pocket so in that case you don't need the tactical rig so i think it's very important to know because um i was messing up a lot of times i didn't realize why the mag keeps dropping and of course you need an empty space in here I'm not entirely sure if he replaced this mag with this. I think there is a bug where he still drops the mag. That takes this one out. And this one is still in the inventory. So this one from the gun will still drop on the ground. So I would recommend having at least one uh, empty space in your tactical rig. And if you're not familiar with the map. Or if you want to loot some rooms. Then you might take some keys. Uh, keys are not used up when you use them. So you can easily keep them in your uh, container in here. Or you can simply take the map. I will explain the map in uh, in a second and also some of the maps have extractions where you have to pay some money so you might want to take some cash with you I think it's 5,000 is maximum you have to pay I don't usually do that it just takes up the space but it's just good to know so once you've uh, selected your care for the map for example in woods you definitely need a site because there is a lot of long-range uh, fighting in customs not that important you can get away with the uh, iron sight removing the rear sight like i showed you factory uh, shotguns are really good for example while shotguns are pretty much useless in any other map maybe in customs they come in handy shoreline definitely need a sight too but i'm gonna do customs i know this map the best and if you have the map in your uh, backpack or anywhere on, on you then you can select your spawn point and it will show you the exit see and let me explain this a little bit uh, these question marks i'm not even 100 percent sure when they close see it shows a question mark so you're not 100 percent sure if it's even open or closed i'm not entirely sure uh how this works so but these exits they are definitely open so like i said know your map which i don't know 100 percent so if you spawn in here then these exits they might be open or might not so once you're happy with the spawns and you know your exits and stuff then just go next i'm gonna do this in offline so i can uh, actually explain things without like getting backstabbed or anything so the first most important thing about tactics is uh, know your spawns this is a administration gate 
it's not even marked on the map as an exit on some reason. I don't know why, it's just uh, not marked. But know the spawn points where the players spawn. This is one spawn, as you saw. Then uh, one of the spawns is behind the wall, somewhere in there where this uh, roadblock thing is. Not the roadblock, whatever it is. Uh, one spawn is somewhere in there, like on the edge. Uh, one spawn is in the warehouse. Uh, actually in two of the warehouses. It's one is somewhere in there, behind this big silo. In there, in the warehouse. And one is, see that crane in there? And then left, there's a big warehouse behind this building. And there's another spawn in there. No, it's, uh, sorry, it's uh, somewhere in there. Uh, there's an NPC already, see? I'm gonna take him out. Uh, he's not dead. No, he is. Uh, there we go. Uh, so, uh, like I said, know your spawns, because if you spawn in here, this is a really bad spawn. If other players know where uh, people are spawning, they can instantly come from there and rush you, and you have nowhere to go. See, there's nowhere to take cover, and even if you, like, crouch in here, they can uh, just lay down and, like, spray you down from here into your feet or something. So it's very important to know your spawns and know where to hide. Usually, when I spawn in here, the best way is to instantly uh, run like here so you have at least some cover like little bit you know angles and stuff so it's very important to know so next thing let's talk about tactics a little bit there is uh, some uh, weapons have full auto and single i would not recommend using the full auto from distance i mean you can put it on full auto you can still like one tap like this so um but always know which uh, mode you have it on and always like map your buttons and everything and well, as about tactics, you must know the map, otherwise you can't really uh, do any tactics. For example, one good place from this side is to get on top of the railroad in here. Because you have the higher ground in here. Uh, people very rarely come in here, but if they do, then you might have like a kind of a trouble in here. But usually people like run in that area in there, so you have the upper, upper hand in here. So next, it's the stamina rule. You see the stamina at bottom left corner. Don't ever use more than half the stamina when outside the combat. And that's simply because, uh, see, if there's a fella in there. I kind of hit him. He's running away. See, that's uh, full auto. It's uh, kind of caught me. But yeah, as about the stamina. If you use up more than half and then you start uh, getting shot at, then you simply have no stamina left to uh, run away. So never use more than half the stamina, if you don't need to. Very important to know. Uh, you can just um, you know, jump over from here, but yeah, very important the stamina thing. So the next thing, always check your ammo and make sure you know how much ammo you're using. If you have like a second in here, well 50 bullets is more than enough. But you can always reload if you're outside the battle. Just reload and do this quickly, drop the ammo into that mag. The other mag is always full, so also very important thing, always keep your mags full, it can cost you your life. And once again, know the map. For example, this here is the shortcut, but you need the key for it. If you don't have the key, you have to go all the way uh, past that truck, go through the wall, this wall, and then you have to go that way. That's where the extraction points are, all the way on the other side of the map. But on this map, there is a uh, kind of a shortcut in here. You can uh, go from here, jump in here. Uh, the bar fire will uh, get you a little bit. But see, that's why you put the medkit on the hot bar. You can quickly heal. It doesn't do much damage. I mean, let's see. Um, you can see it only did like 4 damage to feet. So it's not a big deal. But see, you can skip that entire part in there. And this is a quite dangerous zone if you're playing uh, PvP. There are a lot of people usually fighting in that area in there. So very important, like I said, know the map. That's why the PvE is here for. Or just uh, without the PvE, without the bots, you can just um, scout the map, know the places, know the hiding places, know the shortcuts like that one I showed you. Very important. And then you just move on. And about combat, always pick your fights. Don't just uh, like, oh, there's an enemy and start spraying. No, don't do that. See, I have no cover in here, so there is there is no point starting to shoot from here because you're going to just be uh, Swiss cheese. Always pick your fights and know where to shoot from. N maybe behind that rock in here. If they don't see you, there's no point just starting to shoot. See, this this is... um, It's not a good place. It's not a good place. But I know I can uh, take a headshot at this fella. See? 
Uh, like I said, always uh, pick your fights. Don't just start spraying down the first player or scav you see. Always know where you're going. And if that scav would have seen me, then uh, know your hiding places. Go like behind the truck in here, something like this. They will throw the grenade, so be aware. So you yeah. might want to take a point where you can like um, peek from both sides like this. And like this. But let's move on and let's uh, kill some scavs and explain the tactics a little bit more. So, next important thing about um, tactics is that you want to scout your area first. Make sure uh, you know how many enemies there are. As if you start just shooting, like I said, then uh, one thing is cover. Next thing is that you don't know how many enemies there are. And if you do start shooting, then uh, let me just try to. Uh, scavs are really easy. So you just head shoot them. And I have a silencer, though they can't even hear it. But if they do hear you, then a uh, very important thing. Don't stand in the same place for too long. Same with the looting. Now, I don't know, there are no scabs in here. That's kind of boring. Oh, see? There was one. See, uh, change, keep changing your position and keep the enemy guessing. See? See? The enemy, uh, these uh, parts, they actually play kind of like players. See, he wanted to flank me from there because he thought I'm still on this corner, so he would have had line of sight from here. But I went on the other side and shot him on the side. So always keep the enemy guessing where you are. Don't just stand in here and like, oh, there's an enemy. I take a shot, then I hide. I take a shot, I hide. Because if the enemy does that, I mean, if you're doing that, then the enemy can just keep the crosshair right on the corner as soon as you peek. Boom, headshot, and you're dead. But if you're keeping the enemy guessing, you take like a, a shot from here, then you're gonna go on the other side, take a shot from here, then you're gonna like jump over, go behind here, take a shot from here, then the enemy can't just keep the crosser in one place and headshoot you. I mean, they cooled, but that's why you don't peek the same place twice. That's, that's always the rule. And then the next thing, looting. And these scabs, they are uh, so easy, but still. Uh, don't just, like, loot like this. See? Ugh, that's that's what happens, see? There's a scab already, see? Where's that scab? They can also hear you. But with other players, they can definitely hear you, so... Like I said, uh, know your surroundings, know the voices, sounds. There he is. See, he's aiming this way because he thinks I'm still this side. And I'm gonna just uh, backstab that scab. <coughs> yeah, he saw me, but still. And if you're looting, don't just stand up like this. Because everyone uh, who comes by, they will see that you're looting clearly. What you wanna do is prone down and crawl into the body like this a little bit. I know it looks a little bit weird, but who cares? And then you loot. I can't really show you in here because I don't have another player to show you. But anyone who's looking from the outside, it's very difficult to tell if there are just two dead bodies in here or if the player is looting. So always do it like this. And don't just stand here and like sort out your inventory like, mm, yeah, should I take this gun? No, maybe I should put it in my pack bag. No, it doesn't fit. So mm, maybe I have to fold it and then put it in my pack bag. Uh, don't, don't do that. That is uh, what gets you killed. And especially if you use the guns like um, this shotgun in here. For example, uh, let's make some noise. Let's uh, drop it. I don't want it. So if you make some noise... What the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck was that? <laughs> what is that? What the hell? <laughs> anyway, if you make the noise... Well, I know these are bots, but I'm explaining like if there were other players in here. Then the other players will know that the gunshots came from this generic area. And if you're here like sorting out your gear and stuff, then you can be sure that someone will sneak up and just kill you. So just, just prevent that. You can do quick looting. For example, uh, let me show you. So if you want to search his tactical rig, don't click search. Take his tactical rig if you have the room for it. Run away. Find a place to stay, like somewhere somewhere where it's uh, safer, where it's not, you know, out in the open. 
Uh, this is not the best place maybe, but I'm just saying in general. And then you can open it. Uh, I didn't search it, did I? No, I didn't. I think I have to uh, drop it on the ground and then uh, search. See, there you go. And then you can search the rest. So, that's the looting rule. Never loot too long in one place. What the fuck? See? That's, that's what happens if you start uh, sorting out your shit. That, that scout seed got me by surprise. That's what happens. <laughs> uh, he just spawned in there. That's the problem. He just spawned in there. But uh, that's a very good demonstration. How good the uh, hot bar is. See? Oh, there's one more. I don't know where they're coming from now. There's so many of them. But yeah, that's even with the pots, it's the same rule. Don't stay in the same area for too long if you make the racket, because they will come and investigate. And see, that's also a perfect thing to show you why you need uh, painkillers. See, I can't run anymore. It fucked my legs up, see. It's a fresh wound, I'm not bleeding or anything. But if you take the painkillers, then voila, you can run again. I don't know how long it goes, but uh, you can run for a while. And if it's your last painkillers, then you should get the hell out of here. Uh, Rua Throat Block, I don't know if it's still open. I think if one player takes the exit, then it's it's already closed after that. I think that's how it works, I'm not entirely sure. I mean, there's like a couple of minute cap, because uh, I have extracted in the same place with another player, so... And I used the stamina. Up again, I didn't follow the stamina rule. Doesn't matter, I'm almost to the extraction anyway, but... Yeah, see, it's open. So I hope this explained a little bit, but uh, I have a few more tricks to explain. So I uh, went to the factory map to explain about the uh, sounds and stuff. If you're even walking like this, then the other players will hear you if they're close by, like uh, next to a wall or something. And if you're running, well, uh, I can't really tell how uh, long other players can hear you. I mean, like, depending on your, like, uh, headset and stuff like that. But I would say you can uh, hear running player from, uh, see these blue boxes, like these boxes in there? That's the distance where you can hear another player run. Maybe a little bit further away, depending on the surface. For example, you make a hell of a racket on the um, metal. If I can just find any metal in here. And you make less noise when you uh, run on the... Um, on the like uh, softer surfaces. I can't find any metal. There are stairs. Let's uh, uh, listen to this. See, this makes hell of a racket. So, don't you know, just run around like this because people will hear you. And also at the bottom left corner, see this arrow thing? You can use mouse uh, wheel to uh, use the movement speed. You can change the movement speed. It's not very practical to use that, but you can use it if you want. However, caps lock, at least for me it's caps lock, it's a uh, slow walk, see if I press it down it instantly goes down. And with mouse you can still adjust, you can uh, walk slightly faster or really slow. And you make almost no sound if you're walking like really really slow. But if you listen very closely, for example if you step on something, uh, I can't really find anything. But at this point I can't find any place where uh, you make noise when you walk. But sometimes when there's like glass or something like this on the floor, then you step on it and it does make noise. And also if you do this, if you uh, turn fast, then you make noise. And next there are looting sounds. For example, uh, other people can hear this. And there's all the scab, I think he already did hear me. Or maybe not. But the other people can hear all the looting sounds, whatever it is, if it's uh, like a chest or like a jacket. If you listen to this. If they can hear this, like this ch 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 or whatever it's making. So it's very important. And the next thing, you can shoot out the light. In case you need to. See? And I think you can also shoot out those lights. Mm, prob no, probably not. I'm not sure. Yeah, maybe you can shoot them from below, but uh, most of the lights you can break. So, for example, if you have night vision, 
and the other player don't. Uh, where's this light source coming from? This this is weird. Okay, that's like a I don't know. That's weird. But sometimes it's important to shoot out the light so you can see uh, see better, like uh, where the enemy is coming from. For example, there are scavs running on the other side. Yeah, I heard him first, but you know, he's kind of hiding. There. there we go. It's very important to always uh, listen and uh, pay attention to what's going on. And again, the rule about constantly changing your position. See, they tried to flank me, see? If you stay in the same place, they're gonna just come behind you and they flank you. I think there was one more. Yeah. See? Very important. And that's how you win a firefight in a whatever area it is. And if it's players, then just get the hell out of there. I know you want to loot, but I mean, what's better? The loot or losing everything you have? You have to choose between that. The best way to loot is to either uh, have another player look your back. Or just relocate to a new place. For example, let's go behind here. Uh, this is just an example. It's uh, don't don't take these places. And where I killed them, you go just in another place somewhere. Maybe like up here, something. Uh, somewhere where you can see the dead bodies. I think it was here, yeah, there. And this this is not a bad place actually. You can just lay down in here. Here you can still see the dead body. And just wait maybe a minute or two and see if anyone else comes to loot. Because if people are playing with their friends, then uh, their friends usually try to take their care and save it. Which means if you wait a little bit, have some patience. And if someone comes to loot, then you get them too. Uh, usually like three or four players is max there is. I wouldn't expect like uh, even a fourth or a fifth one if they are not coming within like I don't know. Uh, one or two minutes then they usually don't come but um, it's important to mention these things because a lot of people they kill the player and then they're like oh loot let's get their country and they don't follow the loot rule either uh, lay down like this and then loot that's also uh, important like I said and finally know how much time you have left I think the default button is O the check time see on the top right corner and it also shows you the exits know your exits know your time uh, depending on the map, uh, for example on most of the maps, uh, under 20 minutes then those armored scavs start spawning, like this one I killed. So you can either stay and try to kill one and get like good armor and a helmet. Not good armor, but say the basic armor and the helmet. You can try and wait and kill the scav and take his stuff. Or if you already have good stuff, then you don't really want to stay out more than that. Because uh, scavs start spawning more and more, the longer you stay out. So that's also very important to know. Uh, then know your exits, know your time. Uh, make sure there are no campers in, uh, in the areas. Sometimes people can camp in there. I think the game kicks you if uh, you're camping like your own uh, area. If I would like stay in here and camp, then I might get kicked. I'm not sure, I'm not sure. There used to be such protection, I think, but not sure. But if it's not your exit, then uh, definitely you can camp. So, for example, uh, if someone else who needs to exit on the other side, go simply uh, camp right here. Just wait for someone to come extract and then just mow them down and take all of their gear. So, when you're extracting, check for campers. Very, very important. I actually ran into one that, that was, like, almost lethal. But I hope this uh, explains everything you need to know to uh, survive and escape from Tarkov.